between President Putin and President Erdogan. You've heard the memorandum of understanding. It contains the reaction to one of the most urgent problems of the current uh, northeastern Syria, which is of great concern to many part of parts of the world. And the most important thing is that we have reaffirmed the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Syria and that we uh, we have uh, confirmed our desire to fight uh, all terrorist organizations in the area. We continue to respect the Syria-Turkey agreement reached in 1998 to maintain security on the Syria-Turkey border and the actions to be undertaken, the agreements and the obligations uh, we've agreed upon uh, include uh, the abortion of the military operation that has been launched and the withdrawal of uh, Syria's troops outside the border. This is something we have talked about for a long time, and we have said that uh, the resolution of the issue uh, with the Kurdish people is impossible without restoring the control of the Syrian government of the, over the entirety of Syrian territory, which means that this step is an important one. And the Russian Federation, uh, with the military police and the uh, Turkish uh, groups together with the Turkish groups will continue to patrol this territory starting tomorrow when the memora memorandum takes effect the Turkish self-defense forces will be the Kurdish self-defense forces people's protections units will be withdrawn 30 kilometers away from the border and of course, as it is stressed in the memorandum, it is important to resolve the issue of refugees. And we need to prevent uh, the groups of refugees to, from being infiltrated and other regions from being infiltrated by terrorists. And uh, then again, we still support the Astana format and uh, we will continue to support the formation of the Constitutional Committee. The creation of this committee has been possible thanks to the cooperation between Russia, Iran and Turkey, the guarantor states of the Astana format. Thank you. What specific measures will be taken for the prisons to remain secure so that the terrorists do not escape. Well, this territory is not in the zone that uh, this memorandum affects, but we have talked about this on many occasions. We call upon all those who created these prisons and maintains them, including those who uh, stand behind these people. These people are responsible for preventing this, uh, this terrorist threat from spreading through the territory of the region. On the eastern bank of the Euphrates there are 11 refugee camps. Uh, there are considerably large camps. The largest one has over 70,000 refugees, some have three to 8,000, some have only 500 people. Basically, every day we have been insisting on the guards that the protection that exists today to be maintained. This was what we called for, and uh, so far this has been so. For over two days, though, there has been a moment when there have been no guards in one area, and we believe that up to 500 people uh, in these camps. I'm not saying that all of these people were terrorists, so up to 500 people were able to escape the area. We are told right now that measures are taking by those who control this territory 
to return these people to their homes. But uh, I would like to say that if we are able to implement everything that Mr. Lavrov has just mentioned, everything that we've been discussing for so many hours, and finally have come to a conclusion, the issue is how do we help these people return to their homes? This problem is much more difficult than it seems. It goes beyond simple statements or saying just come and get them. There is a high number of legal issues that are in no way regulated by international law. So we would have to create special bodies or maybe rely on the UN bodies to tackle this because in their own countries these people are seen as emigrated here they are seen as terrorists arrested terrorists who are they going to return to who is going to return them to their countries are they going to be seen as people who have been abroad as terrorists or or as tourists so there is there are very many issues, very many questions yet to be resolved, but this is the situation right now. Where is this uh, patrolling going to take place? Al along the entirety of the border? Well, we've, we've uh, said that it is in the memorandum not we're not talking about the entirety of the border but rather the part that goes from the euphrates to to tel alian to tel abyad and then to the border with iraq specifically the part that is no longer a border with turkey but rather a border with iraq We haven't discussed this issue. The main goal today was to find a way out of this crisis situation, to stop uh, the bloodshed, to reach a ceasefire and to prevent the situation from escalating. Could you please ask your questions uh, just one by one? There is a lot of work ahead of us. We've discussed different options, different strategies. We talked about the possibility of uh, the Syrian government troops moving there, but uh, well, the Turkish troops, but uh, we've uh, concluded that uh, the best way would be for Russian troops together with uh, Turkish border troops to patrol these areas. We have just uh, signed this memorandum half an hour ago. It will, it will be operational tomorrow at midday. Maybe once you wake up, you it will already be in effect. This, how, this was one of the central points of uh, our position, of Russia's position. We have always been, we have always stood for the refugees returning to their homes. We have been demanding international organizations and the UN Agency on Refugees and other international bodies uh, to actively get involved in Syria and help the refugees uh, to return homes to their homes and in many ways because of our Western counterparts, because of our Western colleagues, this uh, efforts, these efforts have been thwarted, but Russia has been doing a lot uh, to help tens of thousands of refugees to return to their homes and as for the Eastern bank of uh, the Euphrates, there are areas that are not controlled uh, by the, that were actually controlled by the US uh, led coalition forces and there people uh, have been constructing infrastructure and uh, have been openly trying to create a separatist state there. But the memorandum we've, si we've signed uh, calls for uh, 
stopping of all of these separatist activities. I hope that we will be able to completely eliminate any separatist tendencies on the territory of Syria. So the operation has stopped and all depends on how well the agreements will be implemented, including the withdrawal of uh, Kurdish troops. There's two final questions. You know, we today, as uh, throughout all these years, we have been working on restoring the territorial integrity and sovereignty of the Syrian Arab Republic. We have been closely cooperating with Turkey and Iran within the Astana format, taking uh, measures to create de-escalation zones, resolve humanitarian issues and create conditions for a political process to be launched. We have been doing, doing this uh, because of the legitimate uh, because uh, the Syrian government legitimately asked us to do so and we would ask you not to base uh, your assessments on the statements of the US because their position always changes and as you know American troops have been on the territory of Syria uh, illegally and I see that some of the members of the US-led coalition are trying to understand that they need to change their actions they need, and this is good to see and uh, I'd like to note that uh, the US has only one hour and 31 minutes to implement all that all their obligations in the deal they've uh, signed the 120 hour deal the 120 hour truce that called for the withdrawal of all troops from the area by the way you are not introducing yourselves unlike journalists from rush today you haven't been showing good manners Well, speaking of uh, today's goals, we have uh, enough troops as for the future. We have some territories that, uh, because uh, there is already peaceful life restored there, they don't need any more uh, troops patrolling the areas. I cannot say right now the specific numbers right now, but we are going to need some machinery, some troops, uh, because the area is quite large. We need to prevent any kind of uh, serious incidents. And the patrolling, like we've said, is going to be joined with, with the Russian troops and the Turkish border troops.